Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning or early afternoon. Back. Um, wanted to talk and watch this. Uh, they did a press conference this morning. They said they were going to do that last night about this Jacksonville Beach shooting. And then there's other little tidbits of news we'll cover in between. And um, I mean, some big news to Amy had post, posted this on Discord was that Allen County judge dismisses kidnapping charges for the Delphi double murder suspect, which is crazy. Um, there's also. I, I got to find where this document is at. There was a YouTuber, Michelle Walk. She talked about it where um, it says that Delphi cops have lost 70 days of suspects slash interviews. What in the heezy is going on? Definitely want to cover this trial when it happens. But holy moly. Uh, two j- junglists. Who else is from Jax? We need to stay home this weekend. Really? I hear, I hear some people saying that I saw some comments from yesterday's live stream, last night's live stream, and some today and in the live chat, people are saying that it, you know, the community is devastated. It's a really nice community. But let's see, Jacksonville. I remember watching some documentaries two years ago or a while back. There's some, I mean, just like there's bad areas everywhere, but they had, I thought they had like some type, they did have some type of gang problem. I mean, I, I saw Jacksonville, let me see something. Gangs. Gang wars. Gang wars. I mean, there's all kinds of ish. I've always heard of crazy shit from Jacksonville. Jacksonville J- Jacksonville's deadly war. This video is sponsored by... Oh, this is Trap Lord. Tra- Tra- Trap Lord did a video on it. There's a whole history about Jacksonville's gang wars. It was a really um, cool song that one of those those guys came out with too. Let's see if I can remember the I forgot the name of the song. Okay, yeah, it's called "Who I Smoke." I can't. The song is copyrighted, but the song it's kind of funny. The song rides. Let's go. I don't know if uh, I could post this on um, Discord. Just say you. Just tell what you're and then they start rapping. I saw that song was viral. Forty-eight million views two years ago. So hopefully that doesn't think this uh, live stream. But I've I've heard of Jacksonville and some of the crime and like I've I've just heard a lot of crazy shit. So this is really I mean I don't know if it's really surprising that this happened out there. I'm not saying the whole place is like that, but there's a long history. Everyone attending this morning, and thank you for your patience. Um, I know you want some information last night. I just want to be correct, um, as correct as possible when we're giving out information. So that's why we pushed this to 8 o'clock this morning. Um, this news conference will be posted on Facebook Live and also on our website for reference. Um, mm, Megan says, I live in, I live in 10 minutes from here, don't go to Jack's Beach ever after dark anymore. Wow. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like you to remember there was um, at least one innocent victim um, uh, struck by gunfire last night. Damn. And uh, one person lost their life last night. So I'd like you all to remember them throughout this press conference. Um, I would like to thank first and foremost uh, Sheriff T.K. Waters, State Attorney Nelson, St. John's County Sheriff Robert Hardwick, FDLE, SAC, Mike Williams, ATS special agent in charge, Kirk Howard, and our, our perennial mutual aid partners, um, Neptune Beach Police Department Chief Mike Key, 
and Atlantic Beach Police Department Chief Vic Guillo. Thank you to the law enforcement officers from those agencies also that came to our assistance last night and um, the leaders for each of them who each of those that personally contacted me last night by phone when I was on the scene. Um, they continue to offer any help as needed and I will be taking them up on that most likely. Most of all, I'd like to thank the Jacksonville Beach Police Department staff who handled those incidents last night with professionalism, dedication, and courage. Without their efforts, I believe loss of life would have been greater. I have the best staff in the country. Earlier this week, one of our intel analysts identified possible gathering of juveniles underneath the pier planned for yesterday, Sunday at 2 p.m. Anywhere from 250 Whoa. to 400 juveniles in their late teens arrived at that location. Because of the intelligence information, we proactively had officers assigned to this group. This group engaged in boxing matches, fights, and other incidents, and Jacksonville Beach Police Department had to take action and disperse the crowd. When the crowd was dispersed, that's when the shootings happened. We had, of course, extra personnel already working because we received intelligence concerning this incident. In addition to this, we had TPC, St. Patrick's Day celebrations, and the regular Sunday beach crowd, and the roadways were packed. Because of the high-profile nature of this incident last night, in addition to national media coverage and public interest concerning this topic, I'm sharing as much information with you as possible. I cannot emphasize the chaotic nature of the incident last night we are currently working three separate unrelated shootings. At this time, there are the details believed to have occurred. Any information is gathered, things may change. I'm telling you this is only a few hours old. We're giving you the best information we have right now. And I emphasize once again, some of this may change. The initial shooting took place in the 400 block of the boardwalk just east of the Best Western Hotel at approximately 7.50 p.m. Officers were already present on scene and on view the shooting and therefore the response time was zero. We had officers on the scene. As a result, their response time was zero seconds, like I said. They had immediately attempted to apprehend the suspects and immediately rendered medical aid to the victim's suspect. It's tripping. <laughs> At approximately 8.13 p.m., officers on viewed a male running by a bar who displayed a pistol and fired a shot. A foot chase ensued, and during the chaos in the downtown area, the suspect eluded officers. That's scene number two. At 8.31 hours, we responded to a shooting behind Sneakers Bar. I had command staff on the scene who heard the gunfire. I had a Lank Beach police officer that almost went on scene immediately. Once again, our response time was a mere seconds. At this time, I decided, based on multiple shooters unknown, multiple victims unknown, to issue an active threat alert to our um, reverse 911, lock down our bars, and immediately evacuate the downtown area because of uh, the unknown circumstances of the shooter. Last night, once the bars were locked down, my main, our main priority was to secure the crime scenes and escort all innocent civilians from the area and from lockdown businesses. Huge task on a Sunday night in Jacksonville Beach on what was basically a holiday. Lock everybody in place. We had to evacuate everybody and clear the streets and look for possible shooters or more suspects. Um, before we could investigate any crime scenes, we had to establish and maintain security of the crime scenes and the downtown area, while also looking for the suspect or suspects. Our uh, Jacksonville Beach Police Department SWAT team was also requested to assist with searches for any outstanding suspects and to escort patrons from businesses. Many of the SWAT team members were already working out on scene working their primary duties, whether it be detectives or police officers or supervisors. At 8.34 p.m., we called in all crime scene investigators, all detectives, all SWAT team members, and all command staff. Additionally,
Yeah, he could have some type. I don't know. People are saying maybe Parkinson's. I have no idea, but he could have some type of uh, ailment or whatever. You know, I don't know. The city manager and mayor responded once the scene was secure for media response and briefing. Yeah, definitely something. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's up there high on drugs. I mean, I've seen videos of cops before on something, but I'm leaning towards he has some type of uh, maybe disease or something. I would also like to take this time or to uh, or whatever. thank the mayor and city manager. Um, they showed up last night at my request. They have been nothing but helpful and supportive, and they remain so to this moment, and they're sitting right up front here with me. I can't tell you how much it meant to me for them to come to the scene last night and check on me, check on my guys and girls, and to be there for us like they always are. And I'd like to thank them personally, along with other city council members. At this time, all scenes have been cleared. However, investigation continues. Once again, this is multiple suspects and multiple scenes. We have multiple shell casings from pistol and rifle caliber weapons down on the ground. Two of these firearms have been recovered. Summary, those injured involved in the shooting last night are the following. The first incident at the Best Western, three people in totality were injured or shot. Two were transported by rescue and one later self-reported to Mayo and was transported to Shands. Two are in serious condition, one is in stable condition. Um, I'll release suspect information in a minute. So the first shooting, two um, victim suspects shoot at each other. They are wounded and are in serious condition. Sure. Uh, um, shot each other, one each other victim, out. the third was a complete innocent bystander who was visiting from out of town. Um, he's in serious condition, was hit three times last night. Wow. So these people are just kind of obviously just pulling out their gun, shooting in a crowded, uh, I think it was by the beach or at a bar. There was actually, I think last year, uh, the beach by me, there was a shooting too, I heard. I wasn't there, but. I heard there was some shooting. It's just a, a lot of craziness going on now. People, there's no, you know, people just pull out their guns, start popping off, especially these young kids. By gunfire. Um, the suspect is, um, uh, one suspect is a tall, thin, black male that's still outstanding. And um, hmm. that's all I can release at this moment. We have no idea on him right now, though. Um, so, once again, three people in totality. Um, we believe at this time that the first two victims were shooting at each other, and they're both victim suspects at this time. The The third person was an innocent civilian from out of town visiting the hotel was struck by gunfire. So I got three in serious condition, but stable at hospitals on incident one. Incident two, no injuries, no one hit by gunfire. The suspect who eluded officers is a tall, thin black male with a ski mask. We've recovered a pistol from uh, scene um, the third incident um, uh, behind Sneakers, Bar and Grill, um, and the unit block of First Street sat, uh, North. The victim is deceased, is a black male, 21 years of age, next of kin, has been notified. On the third call, uh, from what we're getting from witnesses, um, uh, there was some kind of disturbance. Um, three suspects, all black males. Um, presented firearms, um, only one person shot their firearm, and that is uh, the description on that su suspect is a uh, tall, thin, uh, six foot tall black male with a uh, short beard. Um, that's all we have um, on, on that. And the other two um, suspects to pull firearms but not fire are also black male suspects. We have no further information on that. Um, we are reviewing multiple uh, videotapes. We will take anything we can get from social media, from uh, the police, uh, from tipsters. You can contact us at 247 904 oh. Ask for a detective. Um, ask for the detective section. Reference the incidents from last night, or you can always call Crime Stoppers. 
We'll also take any um, social media that you can send us that you're aware of that's out there now. With that said, I'm going to take some questions. We'll go one at a time. Um, go ahead, Tanya. Did you have a question, Liza? Liza, do you have anything? Do you have any questions? Well, Zella, thank you for the coins. There was reports of um, officer firing. Uh, we had no officer-involved shooting last night. We have no uh, no officers once we counted for everyone that discharged their weapons. Um, we probably could have an amazing restraint. Officers were concerned about background and the thousands of people running Let's around see. down there on, on sidewalks and stuff. Um, so um, uh, rest assured, though, if um, they would have presented, uh, uh, the suspects would have met the deadly force criteria, we would have applied that deadly force if we could have to defend the lives of ourselves or innocent civilians. Any other questions? No officer involved shooting last night. Any for you? You can come, Eliza, Eliza, I'll come back to you. Yes, ma'am. Were any of the shooters arrested? Uh, no, we have not made any arrests at this time. we still working on the investigation. Tommy, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll work our way back around. No arrest. Yes. Yes, sir. Is it believed that any of these shootings are game related at this time? Um, the, um, one of the suspects that self-reported on Incident 1 is a certified gang member with the Jacksonville, through the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. On Incident 1, he self-reported to the hospital. Yes, sir. Is it possible that one of the suspects could have been involved in all three of these incidents? From what we can tell at this time, no. We believe they're unrelated based on the first two suspects were hit and transported by rescue or self-reported to the hospital. The uh, second shooting scene, the foot, foot chase proceeded north from a local bar away from location of number three, complete opposite direction. We had a perimeter set and we were actively looking for two when three occurred. We don't believe this time that they made their way back and the descriptions are a little different. So we believe they're all unrelated, and uh, there wasn't one shooter. Oh. Yes? Uh, do we believe that all of the shooters were from out of town, or do you think some of them were based locally? Out of town, out of Jacksonville Beach, or out yeah, of Jacksonville? Yeah, visiting um, into the area, or do you think they were all here just on vacation? Um, I don't know. At this time, I, um, as best we can tell, they're not citizens of Jacksonville Beach. I'm known if they're residents of Jacksonville or Duval County at this time. Um, that's preliminary. So that's, that's all I have on suspect. Um, we had, I've been contacted by um, um, previously before this with the big, big break on, oh uh, push on spring break in Florida. Um, we had res received no solid in intelligence from our people or from um, state agencies or JSO that we were receiving any overflow from down south, if that was your question. Best we can tell, we've received no overflow from many other spring break locations um, close by. This was happening. Um, Allie tagged me in some stuff about this mother. Se se different situation. Crystal Candelero. They j just posted, let's see, she was sentenced. Travel to go see another fellow in. We should watch this later. We guys want to check this out when we come back later? After I pick up the baby? 16 month old daughter's death. There's a video. Was this like interrogation? What do you mean? Like, ah, I don't know, probably she get in pain. No, okay. maybe. About I guess since she pled guilty, they did some type of. I don't know arguments or I don't know this this is just to decide the sentencing this is live video from inside the courtroom is presenting over the sentence and we'll come back and do this maybe like uh 3 or 4 p.m. well it's two hours but the earlier the better maybe 3 p.m. Eastern um, I don't know. we can check it out I don't know if it's uh, I don't know. It depends. Depends on the vibe. It's, it's obviously going to be something sad. 
I mean, almost everything is, right? But um, it says here, to sentencing, this is this the heartbreaking last cries of 16-month-old Jaylee were caught on ring camera while her mother, Crystal, was vacationing in Puerto Rico. She left her kid, and she went on vacation. What in the F? For people watching on TikTok, I forgot to do the vertical stream. Sorry about that. So, so the next stream, I'll try to make it vertical for you guys. Let's see. While she is in Puerto Rico, the detectives were able to locate on the door, on the ring doorbell, that on 6-9-2023 at around 1.04 a.m. in the morning that you hear this child cry. So um, she was vacationing in Puerto Rico. State played Candelero's frantic 911 call after abandoning the toddler alone for more than 10 days. Wow. Sent this to life in prison. So that's a, kind of a spoil there for us. But I don't know if we want to watch it or not. We could. I, I don't know. I, I, I wonder what her excuse was for just leaving this. You know, toddler, baby. Ten days. It might be interesting. We might want to check it out. Humanity can't stomach this. State prosecutor Anna Fraglet goes off on defendant. Talking to other folks at other pit jails, other prisons. She had a conversation, which I find more disturbing than not. But on November 26, 2023, instead of wrought with emotion, wrought with guilt, crying about the death of her child, she's talking what, talking um, with a friend about her trip to Puerto Rico and what a blast it was and how much the car cost. And they got a truck versus a car, even though it was more expensive. And they were concerned about the other woman that was on the trip because she liked to spend money. And they spent money on food. There was never mention about her daughter in her phone calls. And in fact, on January 6th of 2024, she's talking to her mother, who she repeatedly talks to. And they talk about God. God. No. All in the name of Jesus. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. God is forgiving. God is this. You also have to take responsibility for your actions. And God isn't in the courtroom. That's mm. why we have judges, and that's why we have the law, because we have to follow the law. Yeah, you can pray behind bars. Um, I guess, yeah, we could take a look at this when I come back. Um... Let's see this Jacksonville thing. I don't know if we need to keep listening anymore. Let me see what else they can say. How did the baby die? The baby died. Uh, I'm a, I don't know. I guess malnutrition, starvation, slow death, 10 days by itself. Let me see. Let me see if they specifically stay, uh, state. Let's see. I'll keep looking. We'll listen to this. I'll keep local looking. Duval County or in the area of Northeast Florida residents. Um, we just have received nothing on, online to indicate the overflow from down south. Yes, sir. Chief, can you be a little clearer on where scene two is as opposed to just in front of a bar? And then secondly, you guys secured and seized a, a vehicle last night, a blue vehicle on the parking lot um, for processing, I guess. Is that... So... According to authorities, Conde Candelero left her daughter Jalen home alone June 6, 2023, to go on vacation for a week in Detroit, Michigan and Puerto Rico. After returning home on the 3100 block of West 97th Street on June 16th, she contacted the police 
So it's when she got back, she contacts the police. So she leaves June 6th, comes back on the 16th, contacts police. When officers arrived, they found the child unresponsive in a playpen full of urine and feces soaked blankets. The child was extremely dehydrated at the time of her death. Wow. I I just, I don't even, I don't, I don't even, why, like, why, I don't get it, why do people do dumb shit like this, I don't know. And I wonder about her mother, too, grandma, since she spoke to grandma every day, did grandma not ask about the child, you know, or did she just say, oh, the child's fine, the child's okay, or something like that? What did she think was going to happen to leave the baby like that? I'll answer the uh, first one first. So the um, the uh, first scene is uh, the 400 block Boardwalk Hotel. You got that. Uh, scene two is the north parking lot of local bar, the Ritz. Um, this had nothing to do with the establishment or someone running through. So that's number two location. Um, the Ritz Bar parking lot. Number three location is sneakers behind the parking lot. So when you're looking at everything today, you'll be able to kind of see when you go down there. I'm sure you'll be able to kind of get a view of what we're looking at. Yeah, playpen. That's what this article says. To the east. Okay. So, it, and it, this was a continuous foot chase. Sure. So, um, um, yes. And then the vehicle. Uh, so oh, the vehicle. The vehicle was taken, uh, the victim's vehicle, and for safekeeping. Put the volume up a little bit. Yes, yes sir. Chief, the fact that one person who had nothing to do with this situation was killed in, in this incident. I mean, I just want to know, you know, how's your heart feeling right now? Um, for the victims, of course, always, um, uh, because people come to the city um, to enjoy themselves. They live here, they visit here, and quite frankly, I'm pissed off. Um, if, if, you know, we have a reputation out here as a law and order city, I'm a law and order police chief. I have Shooting at Jack's Beast right now. My city management, I don't think any of y'all that know me, um, Y'all would have the misconception that I'm nothing but a law and order police chief. Um, for those of y'all out there that know me. So kind of recapping for the people that joined in after and even for myself, because I talked about a couple different things. With this Jacksonville situation, the first shooting happened at around 7.50 p.m. on the 400 block of the boardwalk just east of Best Western Hotel. Smith said officers had earlier learned of a possible gathering of teens underneath the pier and found that 250 to 400 juveniles in their late teens had gathered engaging in boxing matches and fights officers on the scene were dispersing the crowd when gunfire erupted one witness who recorded video from the beach during the shooting described about 15 to 20 gunshots as everybody started scattering two suspects shot each other and one innocent bystander from out of town was struck smith said one suspect and the bystander were rushed to the hospital. The second suspect, who police said is a certified gang member, itself reported to the hospital. All three were in serious condition. The second shooting, there's multiple shootings. So the second shooting happened at around 8.13, I guess, p.m., near the Ritz Bar in the downtown area. A suspect had displayed a pistol and fired one shot. Smith said no one was injured, though the suspect eluded police during a foot chase. The third shooting that happened at around 8.31 p.m. behind a sneakers bar, a 21-year-old black male was killed. Three armed suspects, all black males, drew firearms, though only one opened fire, Smith said. Three, the three suspects remain at large. The three shootings by multiple shooters prompted authorities to ask the city to shelter in place. It was chaos last night. All right. But the order was later lifted at 10.54 p.m. as officers continued to work at the scenes of the shootings. No police officers discharged their firearms during any of the incidents and no arrests have been made as police continue to investigate. Multiple pistol and rifle shell casings were found at three shooting scenes. 
Um, oh shoot, started over back to the parking lot. Number three location is sneakers behind the parking lot. So when you're looking at everything today, you'll be able to kind of see when you go down there. I'm sure you'll be able to kind of get a view of. And it says one person dead. What we're looking at last night. The actual Ritz parking lot or that parking lot adjacent to it? It's kind of a continuation from the city parking lot into their parking lot. So heading south in that? Heading west into their parking lot from the city parking lot. To the east. Okay. So and this was a continuous foot chase. Sure. So, um, um, yes. And then the vehicle. Uh, oh, the vehicle. The vehicle was taken, uh, the victim's vehicle, and for safekeeping, we secured the victim's vehicle. Yes, sir. Chief, the fact that one person who had nothing to do with this situation was killed. Oh, you saw this already. He said he was pissed. Yeah. Out here as Law and Order City, I'm a uh, this goes back 30 years, uh, <clears throat> and like I've always said, <clears throat> I want you to come to Jacksonville Beach, I want you to live here, I want you to visit, but if you break the law, we're going to put you in jail. And um, some people may need some reminders of that, and that will be forthcoming in the next few weeks. That's been our reputation, and we will consistently uphold that reputation. You need to go somewhere else. Um, if you're going to commit a crime, don't come here. And uh, fair warning for future, if you're going to commit a crime, once again, for the third time, don't come here um, and then whine about being arrested Ooh. or detained. Or shot. You should, you should put in shot. Don't whine about getting shot either. You might get popped. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to do our jobs. Ooh. Okay? Yes, sir. I understand that uh, you're giving a warning out to the people who uh, might want to act up in Jack's Beach. But reassure the people who want to visit uh, Jack's Beach who want to have that. I ain't coming over that. Oh, reassure that. their safety. <laughs> good, good question. We are statistically safe, a safe city. Our challenge is for 25,000 residents, we have to um, police a population much bigger on any given day of the week, any day of the year. Um, statistically, even with that huge influx, we are very safe. I mean, there's been articles, uh, the Daily Beast per capita, we're the busiest beach in, in 2008, we're the busiest uh, beach in the country with 8 million estimated visitors. Wow. So when you start to look at the stats, we're safe, but we also, if we don't make people feel safe, what are we doing? Um, we have to make people feel safe. Um, you know, if you, uh, if you travel 15 blocks or 20 blocks away, um, yesterday, it was a quiet Sunday afternoon. So um, I will reiterate that, once again, we are safe um, with all the population influx we got every weekend. Um, this is a one-off, but it's going to happen. It's a game of numbers. If you have 100 people visiting your city a year and pulling this number out of the air, 2% are criminals, you only have a couple. If you have 8 million people visiting your city a year and 2% are criminals, you got a lot. Um, so our challenge is to police this population that we get a large influx with. But I live in the city. I feel safe in the city. Um, I think we have a, the best police department in the country. I have a uh, supportive council, city council. I have absolutely supportive um, city management. I have citizens that are fantastic that support us and supported us through a lot of years and a lot of trials and tribulations. I have the best staff in the country, and I, I feel like the most fortunate chief. Uh, okay, the third incident was eight police. Okay, all right. So we got we got the gist on that. Um, somebody had mentioned. I saw it earlier in the chat. Faith Evans showcased the Florida mother who recently sell her eighteen month old for five hundred dollars. I heard about this story. Bill just sent me the link. Woman looks crazy too. I want. I don't, I don't know the details though. Let's see what happened. I'm wondering who, who she tried to sell her kid to. Florida woman, 33 years old, is arrested for loitering around H and R Block, trying to sell her daughter to a stranger for five hundred dollars. Then abandoned the bruised toddler. She was trying to sell 
her daughter for 500 outside a local store and abandoning the child when confronted by an employee. This is wild, bro. Like, what is going on? Jessica Woods, 33. She was around H&R Block office in Palakta. Palakta. With her 18-month-old daughter who had a bruise on her face on March 5th. An employee of the business told police that Woods had first come into the establishment at 7.40 p.m. one evening because her baby had soiled it, had a soiled diaper. Oh, my God. Lord Almighty. Wow. As Woods used the H&R Block restroom to change the child, the worker witnessed the mother hit her daughter with her elbow and then spank her, according to the probable cause affidavit. The next morning, the witness arrived back at the office and found Woods sleeping on top of of the outside air conditioner unit with the 18 month old and the 18 month old was sleeping near her in a shopping cart without a blanket. Wow. What in the heck? Is that drugs? I guess. Was she, I guess homeless too. Church of God. We're right there. That's the picture. H and R block. The employee confronted the mother and asked her if she needed, if she or the child needed any help. Woods demanded money, and when the employee said she would buy her items but not cough up cash, Woods became enraged and threw her child. Later in the day, around 2 p.m., the witness said Woods crossed the busy street and went to walk over to talk to, with her. She put the baby down on the ground near some grass. The 18 month began to crawl towards a busy road. The worker picked up the baby, and it was at this point that Woods allegedly offered to sell her daughter for 500 According to the affidavit, what what are we... <laughs> I don't know what this is, this picture here. Um, According to the affidavit, the woman said she would not give her any money. Then Woods replied, you can have the... You can have the... I don't know. You can have the baby, or you can have the... Bitch. I don't know. When the employer refused to buy the toddler, Woods walked away and abandoned her child. The worker took the child into H&R Block and cleaned her up. Uh, there's another picture here. This is a w- Woods previous mugshot. Wow. Jessica did not re- return to take custody of the child, the, the affidavit read. The 18-month employee took the 18-month-old to the police department and told them what happened. Woods is known to have frequented the area. Officers and the department's victim advocate provided care to the child until the Department of Children and Families t- took custody of her. The child has since been placed in foster care. Woods has been charged with child abuse, child neglect, abandonment of child, and selling a minor for money. She was located and arrested March 7th and transported to the Putnam Jail County or County Jail. Her bond was initially 255000 and court documents appear to show she was ordered to have no contact with her victim. Wow. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Damn. Spring Breakers turned Fort Lauderdale into their new party hub. Wow. Party! That is crazy. I'm glad the baby's alive. Lord knows what that baby's gone through. Screaming crocodile handler nearly loses his genitals after 15 foot beast runs out of patience and clamps his jaws around him in front of horrified theme park. Probably viewers. I don't even know if I can show this. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. I don't think I can show this. I'll have to put the link on Discord. <laughs> FAFO. I mean, he's, he's messing with that alligator. He's poking at it. What do you think going to happen? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, I don't think it's that graphic. Now, next time, don't fuck around. 
Mm. Those things move quick too. They snap. Largest reptile with the most powerful bite force in the world suddenly whipped its head around and clamped its jaws on him. The shocking handler shrieked as he saw the predator latch onto him just below the waist and pull him to the ground as a second, slightly smaller crocodile ran to join the attack. Horrified tourists screamed for help as the giant croc kept their handler pinned down, but he managed to stand and the beast with 64 teeth released, allowing him to return to safety. Mm. Crocodile expert said that he was the croc was just given a warning. The croc was just could have easily killed him. Trust me, could have. Where he was extremely lucky is the second crocodile, which rushed in, did not bite him. If he had bite him as if it had, then it could have been fought over in the tug of war and torn him apart. <clears throat> a member of the staff told him he had a serious injury to his right leg, right by his genitals. He almost lost his shoe. Ooh. Um, another, in other news, there was a body found of a child. I think this was this morning. Steve Keeley is a reporter with Fox 29. Remains of a child found in a duffel bag this morning on North 38th Street. Philly police confirmed man doing work in back of property found the duffel bag with severely decomposed remains of a child. Yeah. The other thing, too, with um, at some point, we're going to have to talk about this. Uh, Allen County judge dismisses kidnapping charges for Delphi double murder suspect. There's two hearings going on today. One was at 9 a.m. and another one was at 2. It's not streamed, though, by the way, not being streamed. Um, cameras are not permitted in the courtroom for Monday's hearing after the court denied multiple requests from media outlets. During Monday's hearing, Special Judge Frank Gull ruled on whether or not Carroll County Prosecutor Nicholas can file additional charges against Allen. Uh, McLeland filed a request to amend charges and include two counts of murder while committing or attempting to commit kidnapping, previously filed August 28, 2022. Two counts of murder, two counts of kidnapping. McLeland said the amended charges more accurately aligns with the charging information with the cause causes discovery and the probable cause affidavit. The prosecutor filed to request on January 18, when the Indiana Supreme court ordered Allen's original attorneys, Andrew Baldwin and Bradley Rossi to be reinstated. Judge gold dismissed the two counts of kidnapping during the hearing, but approved for the other two charges. Um, Judge gold also denied a motion to change the venue for the trial, maintaining it and all future hearings will be held in Carroll County. And the trial originally set for October is now May 13. So that's big news. May 13. Um, and Tupac's trial was moved as well from. Uh, I think it was June. It, it, it was supposed to be for June. Now they pushed it back towards November. And Karen Reed trials in April. So I think we do the Karen Reed. They would do the Delphi. I hope it's going to be streamed. The trial itself, I thought they ruled on that. I'm not sure. So, yeah. Uh, what else do we have? I thought there was something else. Hmm. This one here, too. Oh, man. Check this out. Check it out. Check it out. Chad Dorman, he's the guy. We still haven't watched his hearing, but they were, they were trying to. He was trying to get his confession thrown out it, that he admitted to killing his three kids, allegedly. Well, judge rules man accused of killing three sons in Claremont County, or Claremont. I don't know if that means county. Had rights violated after arrest. 
Uh-oh. Tonight we have new developments in the case against the Claremont County father accused of killing his three little boys. Now the judge ruling today that Chad Dorman's rights were violated in certain oh. circumstances anyway during the initial investigation. And WLWT News 5's Daisy Kershaw now, she did some digging on the decision, joins us with what it means for the trial, Daisy. Well, Mike Shree, the judge ruled that Chad Doerman's initial interrogation cannot be used in court moving forward. The defense claims his rights were violated in the hours after his arrest. As Chad Doerman sits behind bars, a Claremont County judge has ruled the statements he made while being interrogated on June 15th last year, the day of his arrest, will be thrown out at trial. Doerman is accused of murdering his young sons. Three-year-old Chase, four-year-old oh, like and seven-year-old Clayton. Last month, he appeared in court for the motion to suppress hearing. Judge Richard Ferentz now ruling that Doerman's rights were violated in two instances. He ruled that a detective failed to properly and fully advise Doerman mm. of his... Oh, man. ...Miranda rights before his initial interrogation. The judge also ruling Doerman's Miranda rights were violated when the interrogation continued after Doerman asked for an attorney. The defense says Doerman asked for one at least twice. But Judge Ferentz also sided with the prosecution in four key areas, ruling several of the defense's claims were meritless, including their argument that Doerman's statements were involuntary due to outrageous police conduct. The judge saying there is no evidence. I want to see that interrogation to support that as of right now the trial is on July track 8th, to huh? begin in july daisy kershaw wwt news 5 and daisy thanks so okay amy has a uh, made me a really nice extensive um trial date chart trial dates and sentencing today's the 18th so richard allen which is not being live streamed that was today on the 20th there's a hearing for ruling on motions with Karen Reed. I guess we'll tune in on that. Oh, you, you, she even made notes about the days of the trial thing. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, full days. Tuesdays and Thursdays will be half days when the trial starts. Carly Russell plea hearings March 21st. That's this week. I don't know if it's going to be streamed. I hope it is because I, I want to see that. And then we got the mother... I sent her child to boot camp with her to her boyfriend's boot camp. Alex Murdoch, federal crime sentencing April first. So there's a bunch of stuff coming up. There's a bunch of hearing sentencing. April 9th, we have James and Jennifer Crumley sentencing, as well as when does uh. Oh, man, don't tell me that's... Oh, there's a hearing for that Microsoft exec. Oh, April 8th. April's going to be busy. So we got Murdoch's sentencing April 1st, and we got, we got the Treehouse murder. I never watched that trial. I heard it was good. I think... I don't know if it was a hung jury. They had to do a new trial. Something happened. So there's going to be a hearing about the retrial. We should tune in for that. I wonder what happened to Karen, Karen Reed. She was on this chart. I don't see her on the chart anymore. I'll have to find out about that, the trial. That I'll have to find out about. But um, the Microsoft exec, there's a couple of, I think, hearings coming up, too. That should be interesting. I never covered that story, but I heard it was really interesting. Okay. Hey, a lot of stuff coming up. Oh, yeah, Daybell, April 1st. I don't think I'm covering that. But April 1st. Um, I don't know if you guys want to watch this mother that got sentenced when I come back. It's about an hour and a half or 40 minutes, something like that. But they show pictures, video, maybe interrogation, too, I think. We just leave the schedule open. Make sure that was the whole thing for today. 
Oh, parents. Oh, wow. Even her parents spoke. Let's check it out. Let's, let's watch that when I come back. Parents of Crystal Candelero asked the court for mercy. Even Dr. Todd Grande covered this. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question was born on September 11, liner in it. The authorities reported that these items were saturated with urine and feces. Question. All right, yeah, you guys want to do that then? Uh, I'll schedule a stream now when I come. I'll set it for 3 p.m., I think, Eastern, so I have a little bit of time. Mother leaves. I don't want to call. I, I think there's an interrogation. Let's put this lady's name in the title to uh, Crystal. But would not offer any more information about her mental health symptoms. If Crystal possessed a viable defense based on mental health, one would think that her attorneys would have introduced evidence supporting this theory during the guilt phase. For instance, they would have taken the case to trial and argued that Crystal was not guilty by reason of insanity. Mitigating factors, of course, can be introduced at the sentencing phase, and this is common, but why not try to avoid a conviction in the first place? Again, this makes it seem as though Crystal did not have a good insanity defense, and she was lucky to get the plea deal her attorneys negotiated. Well, she got this brings me to item huh? number two. There were many obstacles to Crystal effectively arguing that she was not guilty by reason of insanity. Here are just a few examples. Even if Crystal was overwhelmed... She had many options other than leaving her daughter alone in the house. She could have called emergency services or otherwise sought mental health care. Oh my she could God. have simply stayed in the house and coped with her feelings. Or she could have contacted show, her neighbor. They show the playpen too. That was found was strewn throughout. Yeah. Damn. All right. So I'm making a thumbnail. We'll come back and hang out and watch that. Um. Oh, that there. Okay. Boom. Just made the thumbnail, real quick thumbnail. There was something else I could have covered, but I ran out of time. But we'll do this one next. It's possible, infamous truth teller. Maybe, yeah, maybe those people aren't aren't even Jacksonville people. Maybe those were people visiting. That happens all the time. You know, we had spring break. A lot of out of towners come and mess up the place and trash and do all kinds of stuff and then dip out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I guess 3 p.m. Maybe 3.15. Let's do 3.15. All right. Oh, I don't even know if I have notifications. I don't even think about that. Uh, let me see real quick. I know we're on the day last night. Oh, shoot. Uh, no, we don't. Maybe I should do it on the second channel then. Actually, let me do that real quick.
me just set up on the second channel actually so we'll have some notifications to go out and I, I forgot to send out email notifications i gotta get back on the grind <clears throat> i want to start sending i've been sending them but I, I didn't do it for today and i don't think i did it yesterday or friday or whatever either Eight. So we'll change that for the second channel. Mm -hmm. 15 so I can set up the second channel profile. All that good stuff. And then I'll do the redirect. Hopefully it works. Yeah, Carly Russell, lady that faked her kidnapping. All right, so I have to redirect here. Boom. Where am I? There we go. Boom. All right. I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, by the way, uh, with that rib thing or whatever, I went and picked up medication today because it started hurting yesterday. But I guess I can't take it. I took the naproxen, which is over the counter. I don't know why they gave me a prescription, but I took the naproxen. But the muscle relaxer, I think it's called cyclobenzapine. I th I, obviously, I can't drive with that, so I didn't take it yet. Maybe later this evening I'll take it, I guess. But um, all right, I'll catch you guys in a bit. Bye. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop.